taxonomy is basically concerned with the classification of organisms. When we try to classify organisms, what we do is categorizing them on the basis of similarities at the organismic, cellular and molecular levels. Even though chemical and molecular tools are available for finding out the similarities between organisms, morphological characters are the first used tools in any classification attempt. In order to begin our exploration on angiosperm biodiversity, we need to have a basic idea about the various terms used to describe the morphology of a plant. Today, we shall familiarize with some of the terms often used to describe the leaves and their arrangements. As you know, leaves are the major photosynthetic organs of a plant. In dicot plants, the leaves are bifacial or dorsiventral, meaning that the leaf has anatomically different dorsal and ventral sides. Each leaf has a flattened region called lamina or the leaf blade and a stalk-like portion called petiole. Petiole attaches the leaf to the main stem. The leaf has two sides. The side which faces the stem, this side, is called as the adaxial side. And the side opposite to it is called abaxial side. The leaf forms an angle with the main stem and the angle is called as the axil. Something which is present at the axil is said to be axillary in position. So this flower is axillary in position. In some leaves, the lamina may be undivided or endear. Such leaves are said to be simple leaves. But in some leaves, the lamina may be divided into small pieces. Each piece is called as pinule or leaflet. And the central axis on which the leaflets are arranged is called as the rachis. And if the lamina of a leaf is divided into pinules, we call the leaf as a compound leaf. Based on the arrangement of leaflets, compound leaves are classified variously. This is one type of compound leaf where the leaflets are arranged on either side of the rachis and the leaf looks like a feather. Such compound leaves are called as pinnately compound leaves. Depending upon the number of leaflets in a pinnately compound leaf, there are two types of pinnately compound leaves. If there are odd number of leaflets in a pinnately compound leaf, the leaf is said to be impari pinnately compound. This is another type of pinnately compound leaf and this, this leaf has even number of leaflets. And we call this leaf as pinnately compound leaf. Based on the branching pattern of the rachis, pinnately compound leaves are divided into four categories. Here, in this pinnately compound leaf, the rachis is undivided. On the rachis, the leaflets are arranged towards both the sides. Since the rachis is undivided, we call this leaf as unipinnately compound leaf. 
observe this leaf and find out what kind of compound leaf it is. In this leaf, the rachis, this is the rachis, the rachis is divided and produce primary branches. So these are the primary branches of the rachis. And the pinules are arranged on the primary branches of the rachis. Therefore, this pinnately compound leaf is called as bipinnately compound leaf. In this leaf, this is the entire leaf, this is a single leaf actually. Here you can see the rachis, this is the rachis. The rachis produce primary branches and the primary branches are again divided and produce secondary branches. Actually the leaflets are arranged on the secondary branches. Therefore, the leaf is said to be tripinately compound. So consider this as the single leaf and this is the rachis, these are the primary branches and these are the secondary branches. Leaflets are arranged on the secondary branches, that is why we call this leaf as a tripinately compound leaf. In some cases, the rachis may be divided more than twice. There may be branches beyond the secondary branches. In such case, the pinnately compound is said to be decompound. I don't have, right now I don't have any living examples to show you. Fennel and the other members of the family Umbelliferae have leaves which are decompound. This is another type of compound leaf. Here you can see three leaflets and the leaflets are arranged at a common point and we consider this as equivalent to the arrangement of fingers on the palm and we call this type of compound leaves as palmately compound leaves. You might have noticed certain hairy structures at the base of the petiole in some leaves like this. So this structure is called as stipule. There are different shapes and forms of stipules in different plants. Here the stipule is hairy and it is present on either side of the leaf. And in this case the stipule is said to be free lateral in position and if a leaf is having stipule we call the leaf as stipulate and there are some leaves in which stipules are absent and if it is so we call the leaf as extipulate this is a beautiful leaf observe and find out what type of compound leaf this is let us see whether this leaf is having stipule or not. So this is the base of the petiole. And at this basal region, you cannot see any extra fittings. So we can call this as an extipulate leaf. Can you see the stipule in this plant? This triangular structure is the stipule. And it is present in between the petioles of two oppositely placed leaves. Therefore, this stipule is called as interpetiolar stipule. That interpetiolar stipule is a salient feature of the members belonging to the family Rubiaceae. This is a rose plant. Here, at the base of the petiole, you can see two attachments. They are nothing but 
the stipules. The stipules are actually fused to the base of the petiole. And such stipules are called as adnate stipules. Okay, let us learn something about the arrangement of leaf on the main stem. And we call it as philotaxy. Here what you see is a kind of philotaxy called alternate philotaxy. Here at each node there is only a single leaf and on the adjacent leaf sorry on the adjacent node the leaf is arranged to the opposite side. Next leaf to this side, next one to the opposite side and this type of arrangement is called alternate philotaxy. In alternate philotaxy itself, there are some subtypes. Let us try to learn the subtypes. Here, see, this. you consider this as the first leaf. This is the second leaf and this is the third leaf. So, the third leaf comes directly above the first leaf. And such a kind of arrangement is called dystichus arrangement. So, in alternate philotaxy itself, this is a subtype and the subtype is called dystichus arrangement. That means the third leaf comes directly above the first leaf. If the fourth leaf comes directly above the first leaf, we call the situation as tristichus. So, this is another plant with alternate arrangement. Here, see, consider this as the first leaf, this is the second leaf, third leaf, fourth leaf and this is the fifth leaf. So, the first leaf and the fifth leaf are in, in a single line or the fifth leaf comes directly above the first leaf. And such a situation is called pendastichus arrangement. This plant also shows alternate arrangement. But here you consider this as the first leaf and the next leaf directly above it is this one. So that is actually the eighth leaf. And such a situation is called octastichus arrangement. If the eighth leaf comes directly above the first leaf, the condition is called octastichus arrangement. The second type of philotaxy is opposite philotaxy. So, this is a plant with opposite philotaxy. Here you can see two leaves at a node and the two leaves are arranged towards the opposite sides. So, this type of philotaxy is called opposite philotaxy. So, in opposite philotaxy itself, there are two types of arrangements. Here, see this pair, this is you consider this as the first pair. This pair is at right angles to the next pair, and if the leaf pairs are, at, are arranged at right angles to each other, we call the arrangement as decussate arrangement. So, this is opposite decussate arrangement. This is a plant with opposite philotaxy. But here, see, one pair of leaf, leaves are parallel to the adjacent pair. The first pair is parallel to the next pair. So, this type of arrangement is called superposed. So, this is an example of opposite superposed leaf arrangement. So, these are some of the basics of different types of leaf arrangements, different types of leaves etc. So, just go out and observe the diversity in leaf types, their arrangements, their shapes etc. Then you can very easily understand the basic concepts which I have described so far.